I'm Neil Burgess, the director of the Institute of Cognitive Neuroscience. Well, I think um, as, as we sort of foresaw in the 90s, it's uh, becoming clearer and clearer that we can try and understand uh, cognition at the level of mechanisms in the brain and eventually in terms of what individual neurons are doing and how a neuron firing in a certain way in a certain part of the brain will cause you to think a certain thing or act in a certain way. And that's, that's still, you know, I think that's becoming ever closer, partly because of developments in optogenetics and molecular biology, which are really allowing uh, people to see how neurons interact with each other functionally, and also developments um, in, the, in, in neurology, where there's um, more and more, for example, deep brain stimulation or recording from uh, electrical signals within the brain, as well as um, advances within um, computational neuroscience, uh, theoretical neuroscience, psychology, where people are trying to make um, you know, explicit formal understanding of how cognition happens in terms of mechanisms that you can relate to the individual neuron or uh, synaptic changes and kinds of things that you can measure biologically in the brain. Well, that, that, that's a very broad question. There are many different ways in which you see that impact. I think at the moment there's a growing realization that mental health should be treated in the same way that physical health is and that you know appropriate resources and understanding should be put into understanding uh, mental health problems and that these are caused by biological reality and uh, you know there may be pharmacological or genetic uh, interventions and explanations for differences in cognition and uh, problems with mental health and these should be addressed in the same way as problems with physical health. So that's one of the big um, impacts uh, at the moment and the whole idea that, that psychiatry and clinical psychology should really try and um, develop scientific understanding of what's going wrong it's obviously a big challenge given how complex the brain is we've got a lot of sort of detailed knowledge of molecules and cells and synapses and then we've got behavior and cognition and it's a, it's a big gap but um, cognitive neuroscience is sort of trying to link between neurons and systems of neurons and cognition and if we can understand how that uh, link works in in normal cognition in uh, everyday uh, behaviors. Uh, hopefully that will give us the appropriate framework to understand uh, how it can go wrong in various disorders of, of mental health. Uh, well, I would say that um, today, as with the last decade or so, actually, trying to understand the brain and cognition is, um, is a very exciting area to go in because sort of advances in low-level um, technology, genetics, molecular biology, um, and imaging neuroscience um, is really pushing forward how we can try and understand how the brain works to make it really a tractable thing that you can investigate. So as a young scientist, you can go and try and understand some aspect of cognition or brain function and be able to do experiments that have not been done before, which should hopefully give you new insights.